Welcome to conference. We have officially started a new semester here at the Shala. We'll be studying what are we studying this semester? Ashtanga. So I realized that oftentimes we, I assume that all of you have yoga mala and um, light on yoga and all the books and you know everything there is to know about Ashtanga. And the truth is, I think we, we get things in patches and bits and pieces. And um, so I felt like it'd be important for us to just kind of start from ground zero and, and, um, and, and study what it is that you've all fell, fell in love with. And I, I, I'm hoping today in particular, I'm, today's kind of story time. I want to tell stories because I think um, anything, our lives are made of stories. And I think that at the end of this, I hope that you will come back to your own story and answer the question, which I'm saying this semester is called Why Ashtanga? I want you guys to answer the question like, why Ashtanga for you? So the story really begins with our teachers, because this is a lineage that's passed on, we say, parampara, which means what? A lineage, just like the passing on of a torch or something is different. Um, in, I always say Ashtanga is a little bit different than some other practices here in the States because it's something that is, um, is held at a certain standard and done a certain way and teachers are asked to pass it on the way it was given to them is a very beautiful um, methodology. So our teacher, Patabi Joyce, learned from his teacher, Krishnamacharya. Uh, Krishnamacharya had a teacher as well. So this is where the story begins. Now, Back in the day, and this is, you know, we can say um, almost 200 years ago, right? Um, there was not a lot of yoga in India. There was, um, there was, believe it or not, it was not a common practice. You might be doing yoga like poses in school, more like gymnastics, but the actual study of yoga and understanding it in India was one of the philosophies of India. It wasn't a religion, it's one of the philosophies. But if if you studied um, yoga in India, you were pretty much considered a sannyasi or a recluse. So we might compare it to um, what we know about like maybe Buddhism. Um, and, and I kind of compare this to Tibet where the teachings themselves were very sacred and they were kept secret and they were only give, these teachings were only given to the highest of monks that had the um, the highest spiritual degree, so to speak, would receive these Tibetan spiritual sacred teachings. And at the time in, in India, yoga was kind of the same. Yoga was being done by um, these, these kind of wild looking yogis that lived in caves somewhere that could do all these like esoteric, strange things with their body and had these kind of superhero powers, right? That's what they knew of the yogis. So, Krishnamacharya was um, a scholar. He was an educated man from um, an educated family, and he sought yoga. And he, he had to go and look for it because it wasn't readily available, right? Where, where was yoga? You heard about it, but where could you study it? So he, he heard about this teacher that was living in a cave, this is a true story, living in a cave at the, um, in the Himalayan mountains in Tibet. And so he went on this pilgrimage, this journey to find this teacher to study yoga because there was something in him that was drawing him to the study of, of, of yoga. And I, I kind of want to step to the side here and talk a little bit about the koshas for a minute. So we've studied the koshas from time to time, which is the layers of who we are. So the layers of who we are, remember, is first your physical body, then your energy body, then your thinking body, then your wisdom body, your bliss body, and we get down to the soul. This idea of yoga is understanding and keeping those clear. A lot of, Iyengar used to say this, and I think he's quite right, is for a lot of folks, we just live in those first couple layers. You know, I'm just in my body and my head. I'm in my body and my head. I make enough money. I married the right person. You know, get myself to work, get back, pay my mortgage, all this stuff, and just kind of living in that space. Um, and, and to really go deeper into your wisdom and more towards the soul is, is really this search for the essence of who you are. And Iyengar would say that's the inward journey. You know, there's this external, but there's also this, we talk in yoga about this inward journey. So Krishnamacharya, even at the time, it was no different in India. You have a job, you marry someone, you're happy, you're doing well, you know. But something in him was thirsty for those deeper, that deeper spirituality, like, getting in touch with the essence of who he was. 
And so he sought out yoga um, to, to find that, to move into that essence. So he, he searches and searches, and he goes on this you know, quest to find this teacher, and he finds him there in the cave, right? It must be a cave door. Knock, 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 knock. <laughs> and he says, I want to study with you. And what does the teacher say? Take a hike. <laughs> Knock, 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 knock. No, I really want to study with you. You know, get lost, you. And at the time, really, this idea of teacher and student was, um, is again, it was something that we held in high regard, and it was something that you earned, like, just to find this teacher, just to find him because you wanted to be healed or you wanted to be on this path or whatever was, was a, um, a, a feat in and of itself, but then to be there was like, do you really want this? Do you really want to study? This isn't easy stuff. And so we made it hard for him, hard for him. And then he said, he took him on as a student. And he studied with him for years. And about the time Krishnamacharya thought, now it's time for you to be a teacher. Now Krishnamacharya is going to go probably find a cave, right? And be this sannyasi, this yoga teacher. This was a great surprise to him. What did his teacher tell him? Householder. So we say grihasta in Sanskrit, which means uh, the translation is householder. He says, you go get married, have children, and you go and teach other householders this, this esoteric, this secret practice of yoga. You go and you take it to the people. And, and again, at the time, this was rare, and this is a very much a Diana version of the story, but I kind of compare it to um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So, you know, Tibet was really a closed country. You couldn't come in and out of the country. It was a very spiritual culture and a very secret spiritual culture. And when the Chinese went in and they were exiled from their own country and kind of scattered, um, they had to pick up their spirituality and take it wherever they were. And um, when people asked the Dalai Lama about that, he said, because of that, he was able to bring the teachings of love and compassion to the entire world. And so what was once secret and held in a special place was kind of opened up. And I feel like that was Krishnamacharya. Yoga was this kind of secret, if you don't mind me saying so, kind of weird, right, thing that he brought back. And really, Krishnamacharya was about making yoga medicine. It was, it was medicine for the body. It was medicine for our energy and medicine for the essence of who we are, our emotional self, our spirit self, whatever you kind of like to um, label that part of us. And, and so now, you know, here it's kind of amazing, even myself and my journey over the years of yoga to see like there's yoga on every corner now. You know, all different types of yoga available to us because in my opinion of this one man who first brought it to each one of us, our householder. So most of you know Chusang Rinpoche. Chusang Rinpoche is not a householder. He holds a Tibetan um, a, 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 a monastery where every day he starts with meditation. He goes into prayers. He goes into sun salutes. He all day is devoted to um, spirituality, the spiritual practice. But for us, what does a grihasta mean? Well, what's a householder? It means you have to go to work and you know provide for your family. You have to you have to keep a community running. So someone you know is, is, is running a farm with a cow, someone else is a doctor, someone else is a mom, someone else is a, all of us together make a community run, that's a householder. So we don't have time, like Chusang Rinpoche does up on the monastery to be like, I start with my meditation and I go to my sun salutes and then I do my chanting and then I, you know, we, we have to do our jobs, our, raise our families. So this idea of this yoga practice that all of you have found is one thing that you'll do. We're going to do it for an hour and a half today. We're going to do this beautiful practice called Ashtanga. And in that hour and a half, it's meant to affect the other 22 hours of your life. It's the one thing that you do that's meant, meant to make you a more healthy person, but a better person, um, energetically, spiritually, and physically, in, in every other arena of your life. So let's finish with this. If um, I feel like Krishnamacharya was thirsty for something that he wasn't getting just from living the superficial life of, that we were used to, he was thirsty for something. And so he went after it to find a teacher and to find a practice that would, um, that br would bring him to the deeper places. 
And so I feel like all of you were on that same quest, and all of you somehow found your way to this mat, found your way to this place, found your way to this teacher, but it was the same for you. You know, we go down different paths, you know, on this quest of I want more. You guys could all be in the gym this morning. It'd be the hours are better, right? It's more convenient, but you're here. And so something in you drew you here because you wanted to kind of move past those initial layers to, to the innermost part of yourself to find this. So like Krishnamacharya, you beat on the door a little bit maybe. You climb the mountain, you beat on the door, and you're here. What do you ask of the practice is my question to all of you today. Why Ashtanga for you? What, what does the practice give you? What do you, what do you want to gain from being here? In, um, in the, for this next hour and a half. And it's a question I ask you to kind of ask yourself today, but over the next um, few weeks and months, we'll be, I hope, answering that question in a way that actually inspires you to want to be here even more. Samasitihin.